In today's video, I'm going to show you how to edit this Instagram real trend to the beat of the music. And a special thanks to Storyblocks for sponsoring today's video. I'll tell you more about them later on. For now, let's jump on in. <laughs> So I discovered this trending audio clip from Thomas, the street and travel photographer, and I found this reel with the trending music. It's called Axwell Barricade. And what I can do is save the audio or use the audio, but in order to edit it in Premiere Pro, we're going to have to either do a screen recording of one of these video clips playing and send it to the computer or open up the link to this reel on the desktop version and use one of those Instagram download video sites and download the video clip. And then you can just remove the video and just use the audio clip. I'm going to click share and then I'm going to airdrop it to the computer to get the audio. So I'm going to control click here in my project panel to create a new sequence. And from settings, I'm going to swap this to be 1080 in 1920. So it's in a vertical format. So now that we have our vertical video, I'm going to take this trending audio clip that I extracted and just pull this down into the timeline. Now, normally for something like this, I would say we could use a plugin called beat edit to put a marker at all the beats beat points. But because this is a super fast beat in the beginning, we really cannot add a marker in between frames because when we press the arrow key, we can only go one frame at a time. So in the beginning, we just kind of have to trick the viewer to believing that it's at every beat, but it's actually just at every frame because beat edit cannot change the variety. It cannot go super fast and then gradually get slower. It'll just create even beats throughout. And because it's just a short little clip, it really doesn't take that long. Let me just go ahead and zoom in into the timeline here. And with the sequence selected, not the clip, because we want these to be sequence markers, we can press M to create our first marker, then use the right arrow key to go to the next frame and press M, and then just continue to do that. If you find that Premiere Pro is auto selecting the clip, what you can do is actually lock audio track. So that way you can just move forward frame by frame and create a marker every frame. So I'm going to make a marker every frame up until two seconds, and then I'll do it every two frames, and then I'll do it every three frames. And then once we get to six seconds, I'll do it every four frames until we can visually see the audio clip. And the reason why I'm making markers in the first place is because there's a really cool tool in Premiere Pro that'll allow you to auto stack all the photos at these marker points so you don't have to do it manually. So I'm going to do that really fast, and then we'll jump to the end and show you what I did for the last part of the clip. A few moments later. All right, so I just created all of the markers and you can see here in the timeline and above in the program monitor that it starts out very small. It looks like it's just one marker blended together and then you can see it gradually starts to separate out until you can actually visually see the beats. Now we need to take all of our photos and line them up at each marker point. So the photos that I'm using for this demo are from Storyblocks and Storyblocks recently created a Premiere Pro plugin. It's a panel here where you can search for videos, footage, backgrounds, all of those title templates that they have. You can search audio and images. So in this case, I'm going to choose photos and I'm just going to search for city and click the magnifying glass. And to make it easier, because this is vertical, I'm going to go to filter and I'm going to search for photos, but in this case, the portrait. So that way I can weed out all of those landscape photos and show over 2000 results. When I found a photo that I wanted to download, I just clicked on the download icon and select JPEG 7.5. And this will automatically import into my project panel. One thing to note is if you want to change the location of where it's downloading to your hard drive, you can click on your avatar here and go to download settings and change it to the specific folder. I've saved it to my Dropbox folder so that way it's in the same place as my project. So I just went through all these photos and I downloaded the clips that I wanted to include in this reel. So I started using the Storyblocks panel in my videos and it's just so much faster because it saves me those three extra steps of having to go to the web browser download the asset, drag it into my project folder, and then into Premiere Pro. So it saves me almost four steps total. So if you want to try out Storyblocks, you can sign up for their unlimited all access plan using my link below. And I also included instructions on how to install the panel so you can get it working inside of Premiere Pro. Very efficient indeed. So I placed all of the photos from Storyblocks here inside of this bin. And I actually recommend using the thumbnail icon view so you can visually see all of the photos and you can reorder them in a different order that you want it to appear in the timeline. So once all of the photos are in order, you can select the first photo, press shift, 
and scroll down and select the last photo. And here's the cool part. Here, we're going to select automate to sequence, this little icon here. And from ordering, we're going to choose selection order, which is the order that we selected the photos in from the first to the last one. And then placement, we want to make sure it says at unnumbered markers, which are the markers in our sequence that we previously made. And choose overwrite edit because of its insert, it's going to insert it into place. But one thing to note, look where my playhead is. We actually want to move the playhead to the beginning before we do this. So let's go ahead and move this to the very beginning and then select automate to sequence. And now we can press OK. So here you can see as we zoom in that it placed a photo at each marker, but we didn't have enough photos and that's OK. We can actually repeat and reuse the photos because it was so fast that not everybody saw the photos in the beginning. So we can move the playhead again here before the next marker point and we can do automate to sequence again and press OK. And now it will place the photos at each marker point here and then we can just press C and click to cut off the last one here. And let's go ahead and zoom in here because something happened. Let's just extend this out. So we didn't have to place each individual photo manually at each point. We could just use automate to sequence, which saved a ton of time. I can also press A and select all those excess photos at the end and just press delete. So as I zoom into the timeline here and we go through the photos, you can see that the photos are too big, we need to scale them down. Now there's a quick way to do this. So what we can do is lasso and select all these clips and scale it to frame size. Now you can right click or control click on all of them to access scale to frame size. But I set up a custom shortcut by pressing option S and now all of them are scaled to frame, but it's not perfect, right? We still have those black bars. So what we can do is on this clip, select it, go to effect controls and scale it up to frame. And now we can just press command C or control C to copy that one clip, then lasso and select all of them, control click and paste attributes. And this time we're just going to paste the motion. You might have to go through and make sure all of them are scaled properly because not all the photos are the same size. So you have to scrub through and make sure everything is good. As a final touch, we can go to the project panel and we can control click and create an adjustment layer. And from this, we can drag it into the timeline, stretch it out to the end. And on this layer, we can go to lumetri color and we can increase the contrast, maybe darken the shadows a bit, push the whites up, brush the blacks a little bit, and we can can add a little vignette around the edges. And also we can go to creative and increase the vibrancy up a bit just to give all the photos beneath the adjustment layer this extra boot. <laughs> My brain just froze. <laughs> So after the grade is on top of here, it will affect all the photos beneath it. So then I'm going to render it in and out so we can preview how it looks before we export. What this is doing is creating that green bar on the top. It's essentially generating an exported preview of what the final video is going to look like. And sometimes I do this, especially for photos that are very close together, because when the yellow bar is there, it means we're not going to get an exact preview and we may get some dropped frames. All right. So you can see it worked out pretty well. So now we can go up to export and we can call this trendy reel and choose adaptive high bit rate, which is great for Instagram and H.264. And make sure that you have selected the source in and out if you've set in and out points, but if you don't have in and out points, you can just use entire source and then press export. So I'm going to take this final export and drag it on AirDrop to get it to my iPhone. If you don't have an Apple, you can use Google Drive or another app that you use. So I have the reel on my phone. Now I'm going to go to Instagram to this reel that had the trending audio clip and I'm going to click on this audio clip and I'm going to select use audio and then I'm going to press the icon in the lower left to select my reel and then press add and then we're going to go to next not now. So then we can go up to the audio icon here and here we can choose which audio do we want to hear. And in this case, we want to hear just the barricade. I think it's barricade or is it barricade? <laughs> I actually don't know what it's called. So here you can choose to mute or increase the camera audio. In this case, we want to bring down the camera audio. So the trending audio is actually the higher then hit done. And then hit next. 
text. And this is where you can then add your caption and then share it directly to your feed. So now you can follow these same steps to create your own reels by using trending audio. And I think that this trending audio could be cool for like a year in review at the end of the year to just rapidly show all the moments from the full year. So you can use automate to sequence to do this for your own Instagram reels. So if this video helped you out, be sure to give it a big thumbs up as well as subscribe. And if you wanna learn some more video editing tips, you can just click right over here. And I'm excited to announce that I'm releasing my very own Gal Edition wireless keyboard. Remember, it's just limited time for this keyboard, so sign up so you can get first access just by clicking it right over here. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Mm-hmm.